feel like sometimes life is really mental. Dude, that's actually a really good name for a podcast. <laughs> when I wake up in the morning, I always remember what is my why. Because at the end of the day, I didn't just wake up one day and be like, oh, I'm going to be a gymnast. This was a gift, and I'm going to take this gift and continue to shine and do whatever I can do. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Really Mental, where we want you to know no matter who you are, you're not alone. Today, we have an awesome podcast with Jordan Charles who is an Olympian gymnast and who has won a gold medal and silver medals at the Olympics. And we're so excited to have her join us. I just wanted to say before we start, if you are new here, please make sure you follow and subscribe on all socials at Really Mental Podcast. So today we're going to be talking about what it's like to be an Olympian and what it takes to prepare for the games and also how to have a mindset which helps you go through all of the pressures of success and everything that comes with that. So we're really excited to speak with Jordan today. And without further ado, we're going to hop into it and welcome Jordan to the show. Let's go. Welcome, Jordan. We're super excited to have you here today. I want to ask to get straight into it. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do and who you are? I am Jordan Giles. I am a USA Olympic Team USA 2020 Tokyo Olympian. I also go to UCLA. I am a two-time NCAA champion and also a world champion. I been in gymnastics since I was about six and a half, seven years old, and I'm 22 years old. When you hear yourself say that out loud and all that you've achieved already, does it feel like there's more you want to go and accomplish? I actually don't like saying all those things. I don't even consider myself famous or anything like that. So when I do say it is crazy to me. It's crazy to know that, yes, I've gone to the Olympics. Yes, I've gone to World Championships. Yes, I'm an NCAA champion. But to really come to my knowledge, like, I, yes, would love to accomplish more. Yes, I would love to do a lot of things with it, not just my sport, but also the communities around me. So saying it and watching myself, because I do watch myself sometimes, it's just crazy. Wow, I actually did go to the Tokyo Olympics, and people think I'm, you know, this high-end A-list celebrity and for me it's just I'm just wanting to live my life and I'm very humble about it. I think it's really interesting that you keep on you maintain that level of being down to earth and family orientated I think it's super important for people to have that. I wanted to ask how's your mental health going at the moment? My mental health actually is pretty good right now. Yes I have competitions I just did and a competition coming up um We have a world selection camp next week and then obviously world team if I uh, make, hopefully I make it. So right now, you know, I've just been really focusing on myself. Uh, This past few months heading into next year is all about maintaining myself physically and mentally and going into each and every day with a great mindset, really focusing on what I can do within myself rather than what the outside world wants to see me do. When it comes to having all of those things happening and coming up, Do you ever feel a lot of pressure or anxious? And if so, how do you deal with those feelings? Well, I see how like the people around me, like the audience, people on social media, how they see us. And so that's where that pressure comes in. It's about the expectation. The pressure is coming from the expectation of who you are and what you've already accomplished and what people want to see. You mentioned two things, what you truly go through yourself and also being mentally and physically fit to deal with that external expectation. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go into that and ask, what are the things that you do go through as a gymnast and yourself when competing and doing those stuff that people don't necessarily maybe see? And how do you get mentally and physically fit to deal with that pressure? As gymnasts, we go through, you know, there can be family, there can be school, there can be a lot of things that outside of the gym that may not even apply to everybody around no one truly knows but I lost my aunt that was something that hit me differently and as me not being mentally okay it changes the way I practice it changes the way that I do all the things that I need to do within the gym because my body is reacting to what just happened so it's really hard knowing when people say all these things and you're in the gym and you're constantly going through what you're going through and nobody can see it and that one thing that I dislike is the people come for you. This person did that, this and the other. And you're just like, well, you don't know what I've been doing inside the gym or outside the gym. You don't know my daily life. 
which in a daily life as an athlete, just an athlete in general, we practice, we train, we go to weights, we have to eat a certain way for some sports. It's just like a lot of the time, we don't do a nine to five job. We practice six hours a day, nonstop. We have to do cardio. We have to do strength training. We have to make sure we at least get some type of rest. Some of us still are in school, if they're in high school or in college. Like, it's just a lot that we do go through. 100%. Yeah, I love that you mentioned all the things that happen behind the scenes because as a person that is maybe watching a video of yours or a photo you post or maybe they're watching you compete, you obviously don't get that background and the context of everything, like you were saying, of losing your aunt and things like that. It's interesting because that is similar to us passing humans on the street or people where we don't know as well. And it's easy to forget that they have all of these things going on in their own world as well. So what would you say to, if you could speak to everyone who is like watching and maybe even commenting some things which aren't always the nicest, what would you say to them? One thing I would say is I would go speak to someone. I know obviously everybody is not someone you just want to get up and be like, hey, can I talk to you for a sec? But sometimes being uncomfortable is the best thing for you to do. I have had told one of my friends, like, look, you're going to have to do some things that you may not want to do and it may be uncomfortable, but it's only going to get you to a better. But I personally talk to somebody. I just wanted to get into the fact of get it where you said being mentally and physically well to deal with these things, right? And deal with the pressure mm-hmm. of performing and expectations, especially when things are tough. What are some things that you do to still get you up and going to training, going to compete and being the best you can, even if things are going not the best? Well, for us, it's a chain, a connecting chain. If you're mentally okay, then you're physically okay. Because obviously as athletes, our brain tells our body what to do. It's not just like a, a light bulb and all of a sudden we have it. No, like our brains have to t- physically tell our bodies what to do in order for us not to get hurt. So for me... A lot of the time, when I wake up in the morning, I always remember why. What is my why? Why am I doing this? Why am I out here? Why am I going to to support these people or or whatever? It's all about because at the end of the day, I didn't just wake up one day and be like, oh, I'm going to be a gymnast. No, this was something that was given to me. It was a gift. And I'm going to take this gift and continue to shine and do whatever I need to do. And just also knowing that kind of generation looking at you. 24-7. 24-7. It's even for you guys' podcast. Younger generation being like, oh, I want to be like, I'm here is doing this mental health class or the older generation being like, yo, this is a really deep death, like diamond onto how people in our generation are really thinking. So it's all about just like what the, the idol and inspiration that really is given out into the world. That kind of also brings, okay, I can do this, but I'm going to do it smart. I'm going to speak up. I'm going to use my voice. I'm going to tell my coaches how I'm feeling. I'm not just going to be silent because that's also not really good. There's so many things you touched on already, which are like really important points. I like the idea that for anyone, like you're probably inspiring someone in some way and it looks different for everyone. What would you say is the best thing about being an elite athlete and gymnast And also the most, say, difficult thing that you've had to go through as a result of your career in in sport. I think the best thing of being an elite athlete shows who you truly are and how strong you are. uh, Because it is hard in sport if you're an elite athlete, pro athlete. Like, it's really hard to be the person you are. It's really hard to change sides. People can change sides, whether they get a lot of fame or they're not getting... um, That's one thing that I think is really difficult is making sure you're being authentic. How do you maintaining authenticity within yourself? I'm just showing you I'm not the type of girl just putting on a show without putting on a show for myself. I guess you can go out there, be crazy and do all these things. pretend. I'm not going to be two-faced. That's how I see it. I'm not going to be two-faced. I'm not going to go and put on a show for everybody just for them to be looking down the side of the corner and be like, oh, so this is how she truly looks. No, that's not how my life was raised. That's not how my parents taught me. My parents taught me to be very humble about who I am. And 
what I want to show. I think it's really cool just to be able to go out and have fun and enjoy your sport or even life. If you really want to go out there and really enjoy who you want to be, then embrace that and don't feel like people are going to look at you different. And that's what I had to learn. I thought, if I'm going to embrace my truly, am I going to be looked at differently? Am I going to be somebody that's just going to be like, oh, so this is the true Jordan days. No, I've been like this my whole life. You guys just weren't seeing it because I was scared of really embracing who I wanted to be. Totally. How did you develop that sense of self? And is there something that like shaped that experience or did it just happen over time? I was verbally and emotionally by an old coach that I had. And she kind of, you know, took that away from me. She kind of took my spark, my beauty. My mom always told me, you are beautiful. She gave me the most amazing affirmations as a little, like any little girl would want to hear from her parent. And it was really cool just to see how I embraced that. But I didn't truly embrace it until about, I want to say 18, 19 years old. Do you feel family and their support in that? Are you like really grateful that they were there during that time and allowed you to flourish long term? Yes, I was really happy that my parents were around me in that way. They, because they, they could see it. They saw it. They saw the forgiveness. They saw, you know, nothing was able to shine as bright as the little, little girl that I used to be. It was really hard for them. But then finally, I was able to find that person again and then able to continue to shine how I am now. The star is bright. The star is going to continue to shine. Totally. And I want to be mindful as well, because I'm sure that was such a, a big experience to go through on a more broad level. How do you make sure that even when you face setbacks or troubling times, that you're still able to move forward and create a better future? I think of my life as puzzle pieces. So if you think of what a puzzle is, you know, you have to pick up pieces in order for them to fit in the right place. Not everybody's perfect. No one's road is perfect. Everybody has to go through bumps. With my in imperfections or my flaws or something that I have to deal with, I was able to finally be like, okay, let's go a different direction. But I'm going to take what I did as a lesson and take the good out of that so I can carry it on to the next part of my life. So a lot of the time, any lessons that I do, whether it's good or bad, I just make sure, you know what, let's grab the good out of it, go to a different direction, see if this direction is going to be the best route. And see if that puzzle piece will be able to fit into my... What helps you really get to that place of setting your goals and your achievements and really truly believing that nothing can stop you in your path? I would say God. Uh, he's helped me through a lot of things. He's the one that gave my gift. He's the one that gave me my path throughout my life. Just believing in no matter what, at the end of the day, as long as you try, then you're not going to feel like a failure. I feel like a lot of the time, I'd rather try than not try. That's how I see it. When it comes to like, I guess, all of the experiences you've had growing up and like, um, you know, I can already tell how mature it has made you and like wise. What's some <laughs> advice you would give to your younger self that was going through life trying to figure things out? I think I would tell her to always remember no matter what is thrown at you, you can conquer anything in 60. Because that was something that I felt like I wasn't able to do. And knowing that if I could tell my younger self that, she would be able to do the things that she wanted to do at a quick pace. But yeah, as much as you can, but don't overwhelm yourself. That's something that I did as a younger girl. Where that Everything was so overwhelming. I didn't know what to do. I was just like, because I was young. I was moving at such a fast pace. I was doing all these crazy, unique, different things as a gymnast and in school and stuff. Don't overwhelm yourself, but always remember you can conquer anything that puts your mind to. But your dreams are very powerful and thing you put your mind to. So, I wanted to ask now, do you ever feel overwhelmed now? Do you ever overwhelm yourself? Anybody can relate to this. It, no matter what you do in life, it's going to be overwhelming, whether it's something great or something, you know, bad. You're always going to be overwhelmed. But now I can manage how overwhelmed I get, whether it's with a competition that's coming up or whether it's with like a test in school or 
or it's just one of those days you just wake up on the wrong side of the bed. I can handle and control how overwhelmed I get. I've been trying to work towards at least not having too much stress or overwhelming myself too. It's definitely, you know, something worthwhile trying to achieve. I feel as well part of life is to understand peace. We have to know what stress is like. Yes. What type of mental preparation does an Olympic gymnast do to get ready for an Olympic Games? For me, because I can't speak for every Olympian, but for me, I like to, I have times where I would just, just nonstop will go either online, in store, and I will shop, whether it's for shoes, clothes, it just depends on what I'm feeling that day. But then I also have a time where I will just binge watch a Netflix show. It helps get my mind through a whole different direction. I figured out myself that I can cut off when I want to think about gymnastics and when I don't. And so that also has helped me as well is being able to be like, hey, I'm in the gym, gymnastics. I get out the gym, life. You have other things. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to do anything about that. Uh, so that's how I was able to, as being an, an Olympic athlete, an Olympian is navigating myself through another cycle or whatever it is for a condition. It's kind of relaxing my brain. That's cool. I wanted to ask, how do you feel being an athlete and being an Olympian and having all those experiences that you've, all those achievements you've mentioned at the very beginning? It's so crazy to me. I don't know. I still, like I said earlier, I don't even consider myself famous. So those achievements, I'm beyond happy that I achieved them. Because yes, those are off those are on bucket list. Those are on a lot of people like, yeah, I want to go to the Olympics. Knowing that I was able to reach that goal and succeed and actually do an amazing job out there. I really like, that's cool to say. It's like, you know, being an elite athlete and then I have another title being called an Olympic athlete or an, an Olympian. It's just crazy to know that when I was seven years old, that was my dream and I'm 22 and I felt it. Can you talk us through what it felt like to win a silver medal and just like the full range of emotions that you would feel. And for context too, we had a Paralympian on who won four gold medals, Nick Mayhew, absolute legend. And he was telling us about how there was this high and after the games, he felt all these different emotions. So feel free to give us the whole scope of just everything that was happening as much as you're comfortable doing. I can basically say the same thing. Yes, you're on a high, you're on a like, 350 different emotions. You want to cry. You want to be excited. You want to call everybody. There's just a lot of emotions that go through it on the high. And then once you hit that round where you're back home, it's just like a different type of emotion. For us, we did have a lot of things throughout the competition that had to be around. I had to step in for somebody who's literally the goat of all the world of Japan. Just in that moment, I can tell you, like, people were telling me, oh, that was 15 minutes for us. I, that felt like three seconds for me. Literally the fastest me I've ever gone through. Like, it was just crazy to even know that, one, I had to step into some huge shoes. Like, still to this day, like, I look at my medal and I'm like, there's no way that's real. There's no way. That's really beautiful that you share that with your family as well. And you're able to look back on the last few years and have something tangible to showcase your achievements, if that makes sense. After you're in that, in what some people would see potentially as like a peak moment in your career and in a lot of people's careers, does it feel like that's like this huge moment or does it feel just, like this is just how your life is and you're used to it? For me, that felt like a huge moment. There have been people that have gone to the Olympics multiple times, so it might just to them feel like, okay, yes, I've done this before. But for me, I was just like, like I was saying earlier, in awe that I was even in that position, knowing that that was my dream when I was seven years old. So I was just really excited to be out on the hugest stage of my life, because that is literally the hugest stage of everyone's life whether you're in track swimming diving golfing like it's huge because it's not just your state your like your country watching you it's the whole world like whole entire world is watching you. for me now going into you know this next go round for paris yes my brain might be like okay i've done this before 
But when I first did it, I was just in awe of how much I succeeded through my life and that I was just there. I was, those memories will always be with me no matter what. What do you want to achieve in, you know, this next period of your career? Give back to the communities that I have helped me, whether it's school related, whether it's my parents like jobs related like just giving back that's something that i always love to do and just being able to live my life to the fullest i'm not done yet i still have so much to achieve within myself i've been able to you know accomplish but i'm gonna take it back i won't consider myself famous until i wake up in the morning and can look at myself in the mirror and say you've done everything that you could have done within yourself. It's like what Beyonce has said. She isn't a queen yet until she feels like she's accomplished everything in her life. And I'm pretty sure she has done that. So that's how I feel when it comes to my future, my goals. Obviously, there's a lot of things that are connected to you than a lot of people may think, whether it's, you know, acting, whether it's music. <laughs> no one knows that I play music. Whether it's um, real estate, whether you find another job, whether you can do another sport, like there's just a lot of things that are connected to you and you can just go those routes. And that's how I feel. I'm not done and really excited to see what the future holds. I just had one last question. One thing that I think I really admire about you from our conversation is the fact that you talk about building a life outside of what could easily become your whole identity being an Olympian, being a gymnast, a gymnast at UCLA. There's so many things that with the success you've had, it's easy to hang on to. Like, how do you detach yourself from Jordan, the athlete, and make sure that you're having like life experiences outside of that too? Well, I'm a very, I'm very much of a social butterfly. I get, that's where the overwhelm part comes into play. I get very overwhelmed if I'm just stuck in one place, not doing something. I've been like that ever since I was a kid. I was the only one who really, as a gymnast in the elite realm, the only one who could go to school, like public school. A lot of them are homeschooled. So I know my sport is always going to be with me. I know I'm always going to be identified as an Olympian. I know I'm always going to have gymnastics attached to me. In any way, shape, or form, whether I'm doing an interview, whether it's a red carpet, whether it's a premiere. But I also know that's not always going to be something that I can continue. Your sport is not something that you can always continue until you're 150 years old. And so knowing that there's ways for me to build a business, there's ways for me to do everything that I can to help others, whether it's with cancer, whether it's with diabetes, whether it's, you know, trying to figure out how we can get homeless off the street. There's a lot of things that I know that I was taught by my parents, mm. you know, going to church and being able to have Sunday services at the end and helping homeless, give them food, give them everything that they needed. So I was able to see that and I was able to grasp on to the fact that I can do more than my sport and I am more than my sport. A lot of people only see me as my sport, but that's not true. I can be an actor, actress if I want to. I can be in movies if I want to. It's just you have to put your mind to it. And that's how I've been able to really be my future in that way. Because obviously I'm not going to be a stay-at-home mom. Who wants to do that? I'm not going to let my kids do this, this, or whoever my husband is. Like I'm going to really enjoy my life because that's how life should be. You should really take your life into consideration and really be able to focus on the little things and not so much the bigger picture because the little things are what's going to get you to that bigger picture. And that's how I was able to get to the Olympics. I had to go through the little things to get to the bigger picture. So my future is just a bunch of, I'm very open-minded too. Like I can literally, I, my imagination is beyond things that I feel like a lot of people could actually do. That's awesome. And just one final question <laughs> to wrap up. What's something in the world that I guess you would like change if you had the power to? And what would be your advice to people around that? I feel like a lot of people regret a lot of decisions they make. I feel like the only reason why you made that decision is because you felt like it was the right one. Yeah. But always remember that not every decision that is made is going to be right. 
but also learn that those lessons are going to be able to, you're going to be able to take from them and move on with whatever. And also your past is your past. Don't let your past come into your present. Don't let your past come into your future. Because that's always something that's going to be tangled up as well. So that, that's what I would say. Just enjoy life. I like to tell people that. Just enjoy life. I know it's hard. Trust me. I'm 22 years old. I recently bought my parents a house. I have a car. Life is life. Life is hard. But when you truly think about it, you wouldn't be living the life right now if it wasn't for God. If it mm -hmm. wasn't for what he has given you, if it wasn't for something that you were able to accomplish. So why take your life for granted when it's been given to you in a million multiple ways? That's just all I would have to say. Even to the world. Like, just don't regret your life. Like, your life is something that was given to you. You were brought onto this earth for a reason. And if you need help with that, then go ask for help. Don't feel like you need to be stranded in a little corner because you're afraid what people are going to tell you. It's okay to get told no. It's okay to get told yes. But always remember that you're going to be able just to embrace that and take that onto your next. I love that message. So I really loved that episode, Will. I think it's really important to acknowledge Jordan's achievements because they're so amazing and how she's been able to get a silver medal at the Olympic Games and step in for someone to really perform for her country. I think it's really important to take away from this episode how if you put your mind to something, you can really do it and you can really achieve something as long as you put the hard work and you have a good support system around you. So I think that's really important to keep aware and for everyone to keep in mind when they're trying to achieve their dreams is you have to work hard and you have to surround yourself with the right as well and i think that's what jordan kind of has told us today thank you so much for making it this far be sure to share it with a friend and rate the podcast five stars we're going to be having episodes out every week and we have some exciting new guests so i'm excited will i'm sure you are and for everyone listening thank you for making this far and we will see you next week